Let's work on painting folds of fabric on a dress in acrylic. And this is Matt Filio in the studio working on this 11 by 14 acrylic portrait of the three children. And um, today we'll be working on painting uh, folds of fabric in acrylic. Um, primarily on this uh, pink dress, both her dress and this other girl's dress. They're almost the same color. And we have some really interesting textures with this a kind of lacy fabric, I think it's called tulle, and it's kind of like a ballerina skirt, I'm guessing. She's sitting down here. And then also this girl's dress here on the left with these ruffles, if you can see in the reference photo. I'll just kind of show you uh, what we're looking at. And so a lot of interesting textures, um, but that's what I'll be working on today. Um, so for that, um, I need to darken some of the values. And I mentioned this in a previous video. I just got done um, darkening these areas on the left, some of the darkest values. Now I need to tie them in with the mid-tone and also add highlights to the top. We'll see how far I get in today's video. Um, but if I don't get it accomplished in this one, uh, there will be more to follow. All right, so I'm gonna take some alizarin crimson and naphthal red. And even a little bit of this hot pink. I'm going to show you what I'm mixing here. I'll position this so that you can actually see what I'm talking about. Okay, so these are the colors we're talking about. This hot pink, naphthal red, alizarin crimson. And I'm going to just a little bit of titanium white so that covers better. And I want to introduce that. I'm going to take a little bit of naphthal red. That'll... Just liven that color up a little bit. I want to fill that in right here below this top part of her dress going into the shadowed area on her waist. And it looks like the daylight is a little bit cooler in tone. So some, sometimes, I, I would say a lot of times, the lighter tones are warmer, the lighter values are warmer, but if you're outside, that bluishness of the sky can affect that, and then you'll have the opposite effect where the lighter areas are cooler in tone. And it is kind of what we're seeing here, that the lighter areas are in fact cooler in tone. So I'll be establishing that look, but I just want to darken this overall shape, leaving this lighter area here, that particular fold, the light is catching that. I'm going to darken this spot right there out of that darkest value going into the mid-tone. I'm going to darken along the edge of her, the top part of her dress. And we have some of these ruffles here which I want to establish using some vertical strokes. So I'm kind of leaving the highlight in a sense alone by not painting over it, but I'll be adding some actual more opaque lighter colors to the top. Hey, just want to say really quick thank you so much for watching this video. And if you like it, would you help me out? Give me a thumbs up, um, share it with your friends. Um, that way it'll be seen by more people and more artists will be helped out. Subscribe to this channel, of course, if you like this channel, what I'm doing here. You'll get notified every time I put out a new video if you hit the bell icon as well. So subscribe, like, hit that bell icon. Keep in touch with me if you have any questions at all. Just leave a comment in this video. I'll be happy to help. And then lastly, um, if you go to Realistic Acrylic Portrait School, that's realisticacrylic.com, I have several tutorials to help you uh, to paint an acrylic portrait you can be proud of. Thank you so much for watching this video. God bless and let's get back to the video. I want to use the same color and just darken this particular wrinkle on that side if you can see it. It's not only a wrinkle but there's some stripes in the dress so that adds a little complexity as well. We'll be Darkening this fold here, just using the tip of this brush, just darkening this little fold. And I have a round brush, I think this is a size 10 or 12, I'm not sure exactly what it is anymore. Um, 
you can see the size here and it gets to a nice point at the end but it's it's a little bit um, thicker so it holds quite a bit of paint and I can also cover a large area if I use more pressure and get the bristles to kind of spread out at the end it almost works in a little way like a flat edge brush if I need it to but for small areas like this and this being a very tiny painting with a lot of detail um, it's important to have a good versatile brush this is a really inexpensive brush um, I got it in a set at uh, Hobby Lobby um, I think it was like 12 oh so it was 30 brushes 30 brushes there are some a larger rounds smaller rounds and it was maybe I want to say fifteen dollars for the whole set so a really good price and yeah I've abused it the the lacquer has come off I've let it sit in my water a little too long my rinse water but um, anyway it's not an expensive brush so I don't mind abusing it a little bit and uh, it's been doing a great job for me here all right enough about my brush um, so I'm just adding some little striations here going very very lightly on the surface and that allows me to get it just to a little point trying to establish this kind of curved surface on the top of her dress and there's a couple areas in here that I'd like to tackle and darken just a bit but I'm going to need to change the color out it has to get just a little bit more to the pinkish side so let's take some of this hot pink color right here and we'll kind of mix that in with what we have over here so add some white to that as well just to make it cover better when the, pa the painting gets a little further along in process in progress more towards a uh, halfway point and later on then I get a little more opaque not completely I still use matte medium to make it somewhat translucent but I'm starting to add some opaque layers to smooth things out and just to um, I don't know, give it a little little bit more of a painterly look add a little more of that hot pink it was just a little too light in value okay where was I at so I was down here and I just want to darken in some of these areas on her dress that hot pink really is a nice vibrant color I had had to buy it just for this painting I think I mentioned that in a previous video I I normally would never use that color but in order to get the vibrance the pigments I had just were not strong enough So, yeah, it's working good. I, I can use that for future paintings if I ever have a need for that again. So I'm just filling this in in a few different spots. Filling it in on the end of her dress, trying to get some of these shapes and patterns, even leaving the areas where those lines will go. There's some white lines in there, kind of by not painting them in them, creating them in the negative sense, in that negative space. But I will be painting over it with opaque paint as well. All right, so now I think I might work, well, let's see, maybe I can hit just the top part of this dress a little bit. A lot of bit, a little bit of a highlight with titanium white and some of that hot pink. Thin that out just a bit with some matte medium. Let's see if I can add that to the top part of her dress. A few different spots, even a little bit here on her abdomen area. just a bit right there on, on the waistline there's a little a thin wrinkle to add that to all right now let's move into 
her dress over here, the child in the middle. <clears throat> Some of these folds and everything will be very interesting to try to create. I'm still trying to get more texture on the bottom. And so just to see some of these folds in the fabric, the different values and shapes, I'm trying to get it as simply as I can and then get more detail as we go in. And the color is a little more intense on the bottom and a little cooler on the top, so I want to try to emulate that idea. So I'm pulling basically from this area, this kind of reddish orange color and then mixing it alternatively into this lighter pink. Looks like right here we have some of that reddish orange pinkish color. I don't know what you'd call that color specifically. Be maybe a carna carnation or scarlet lake or something like that. Just going to pull from that. Back when I used to work with colored pencils, they had all these different names for colors, and I don't know, maybe I should go and try to memorize the different names of colors so I can get a little more precise. Not sure if that'll be helpful for people in teaching, but it might be kind of fun to be able to name out all these colors. But anyway, um, just want to really see these shapes and let's see, we have a couple of little folds of fabric here. They're vertical lines right here. So I want to try to single them out, paint them. <clears throat> and then we have a couple spots right here that I can establish a little more saturated. Um, I'm going to take almost just straight organic red orange so that would be this right here and some matte medium and then I want to fill that in just in yeah that might be a little too orangish let's let's add a little naphthal red to that thin that out with medium I'll just squirt it on the top and And let's add that just to the top right here. Maybe if I mix a little bit of pink with it, I can get it a little more vibrant. Take a pink and then a bit of the organic red orange together. I'm trying to get that color really vibrant because it's just, I can see in the picture it is such a vibrant color and I'm not quite in achieving it using these other mixtures. Just adding a couple little patterns wherever, just adding some texture. I'm trying to follow the picture. I'm not getting all the patterns precisely as far as what's in the picture, but if I can get it close I'll be happy with that. Here, this can get a little more vibrant too. And then here, there's a little section as well. Right here, I want to add that 
darken this spot in, and that will suggest the form of the fold of the fabric stick, uh, sticking out a little bit in front of the other. And this is um, a little in shadow. Then we have this looks like direct, almost like direct sunlight hitting just a couple spots on the dress. So that's how it appears in the picture. I'm not sure. But whatever that is, I want to show it just like what I see in the reference photo as much as possible. We're going to add a little bit of a darker shadow right here and a couple spots. Now here the color looks like it needs to fade more to just the pink side, so a little bit cooler. So I'm just going to add that more of that hot pink color and we'll just add that right in here. tone and it maybe has even just a bit of violet. If I add just a little bit of purple, deoxazin purple, I don't know if that'll be too strong or not to the hot pink. I'm starting to run out of room on my palette. So this has just a little bit of deoxazin purple in it. just a touch of white to that mixture. Let's see what that can do for it. Maybe just a touch more of the pink. See if I can zoom in a little bit more. Really try to get close in and see what I'm painting. All right, I'm trying to get some of these folds of the fabric in here. Darken this area below, getting a little separation between that upper fold and then this fold here. Just trying to really get this vibrant magenta, I don't know, purplish pinkish color. So adding just little touches of that all over something right here as well. Up on here, maybe just a bit of that color. Yeah, I think we're achieving that slowly. Just little by little. Just kind of define the edge a little bit more. All right. I think that's good. I think that's a good stopping point. I'll stop here on this video and um, I hope you found this interesting. hope you found it helpful. It's just, just is a different portrait than what I've ever done. And um, painting folds and fabric is very challenging and it takes several steps to do it right, especially when it has a lot of intricate de details, excuse me, a lot of intricate details like this. Um, but anyway, if you found this video helpful, uh, give it a thumbs up. I'd encourage you to share this with your friends especially um, artist friends or people that appreciate art uh, they'll find this interesting and helpful uh, you can do that here on YouTube with the share buttons or if you're watching this at realisticacrylic.com you can share with the share button below in this post and I, I would prefer that method because that helps others to see the tutorials I have at realisticacrylic.com and uh, by the way you can go there and visit at realisticacrylic.com for uh, several tutorials co covering all different aspects of acrylic portrait painting. My goal is to help you um, paint an acrylic portrait you can be proud of. 
Uh, so I hope this video is just one part of that, of that goal. And um, yeah, so thank you so much for watching. Uh, leave your comments below. Ask me any questions. Be happy to help you. And uh, we'll see you in the next video. Thanks again.